Hello friends, I'm Ashish Dabari, founder and CEO of Axiomize. And to our new listeners, welcome. And to our old ones, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about a topic quite close to my heart and is at the center of all modern day innovation and technology. It's called a system on chip, also known as a SOC. Now, it is quite difficult for me to be able to explain this quite technically complex uh, area and field uh, in an eight minute bite-sized podcast, but uh, I'll make an attempt nevertheless, and you can tell me if I did a good job or not. So take this um, to be a very high level uh, introduction to what a system and chip is. So the industry in which we operate is firmly driven by hardware development and the hardware development at its very heart has got a system on chip. So for those of you who are actually new to digital or electronics world or even software world, you may actually not realize how much of system on chip is being used by all the human beings on the planet. So if you ever own a mobile phone, for example, you actually have or own a system on chip. So what do these systems on chip mean? So what it is, is a collection of all of the processing and magic key bits that you need to actually put a software on top of it and get working. So in a more technical sense, a system on chip is a collection of a microprocessor, often known as CPU. Uh, it's responsible for numerous calculations. It's responsible for uh, storing data. If you have any form of graphics on a phone, for example, you might, you might actually be using a GPU. It's also called a graphics processing unit. If you also play games, chances are you may actually have some interesting ray tracing elements in it. Um, you are certainly using Wi-Fi. You have networking enabled on it. Uh, you might also have the ability to transfer data uh, to a USB device. So you may have a USB controller in it. Um, and if you ever use Bluetooth on the phones, then you have a Bluetooth controller on it. So all of these components perform specific functions and they're all connected to one another on what we call um, in the digital world a bus or uh, in the recent times what we really call these things is, is an interconnect. And an interconnect basically connects a gazillion number of these processing elements um, together. So it will provide a processor with access to a memory, uh, it may actually enable uh, a DMA controller to talk to the processor, so things like that. So, so system on chip is inherently a very complex entity. And in the days of desktop computing, uh, we used to have a motherboard, right? If, if some of you remember that, and then you had all of these different things spread on a motherboard. So system, system on chip is now like one huge motherboard collapsed into this one single die and everything that is computing related, either it's memory for storage or CPU or GPU is all located on a single die. So yes, it's, it's quite the norm. And as I said, almost everybody who uses a smartphone these days has an SOC, but actually to build these things in a, in a way that they don't break down when you use them and they don't have defects or bugs. It's quite hard to be able to build these things in a resilient, reliable way. And to make things more interesting, because of the networking aspects of the SOC, security takes center stage and security has become a very big problem, a challenge, if you like. On the other hand, if some of these SOCs are actually being shipped to cars, so for example, a modern car today has got much more electronics in it, much more processors in it than the latest aircrafts. 
So if you want to actually ship an SOC into that domain, then you also need to ensure that it is going to be reliable, it is going to be safe. So automotive functional safety has become a big concern. And there is a standard called ISO 26262 that talks about enforcing design and test uh, discipline on these things uh, that can then be checked and independently validated so that you know, everybody can make sure that these things work as expected. So as much as security and safety are throwing two dimensions of challenges in the designs of SOCs, power is a very important one has been there for more than at least a decade, I would say. One of the many reasons why the ARM architecture became so popular was this because it was very uh, nice for uh, low power devices because if you're running a mobile phone, you don't want it to run out of battery every now so often. So power, safety, security, and at the end of the day, you also want these things to be fast, right? So performance becomes a very important aspect of these SOCs as well. So now if you imagine trying to build something that has got to be functionally correct, meaning all of these connected components on the interconnect, like the CPU, the GPU, uh, the Bluetooth controllers, and networking controllers, they're all working correctly, but also comply to the safety requirements of ISO 26262 standard or the emerging standards for security and are also power efficient and deliver good performance, there's a lot we are asking for from an SOC. And to be honest, with so much competition in the industry and so many vendors trying to, to ship to the market as fast as they can, there's not too much time trying to make these things. So we have shrinking time to market increasing complexity from SOCs, more requirements, so from machine learning point of view, more and more vendors are trying to do distributed machine learning, and some of it is being offloaded on the hardware in a, in a more uh, specific way. So, so the requirements and features are increasing, time is shrinking. How do we actually do a good job in making sure that we can test and verify these devices in a reasonable way? So in the next podcast, we will talk about the test and verification ideas of the system on chip. So I hope you liked this podcast today and uh, feel free to ping me with your suggestions, feedback, questions at info at XMIs.com. And please don't forget to uh, subscribe to YouTube channel, um, XMIs YouTube channel and also subscribe to our newsletter. That would be an excellent way to stay in touch. So looking forward to welcoming you back again in my next podcast. Thank you very much for your time today. 